Watch, I'm going to do to you spiritually, emotionally. You need to muzzle him, but he'll deliver you into my hands, just like he delivered Muhammad into hell, in Jesus' name. Exodus 21, 20, 21. Read the verse for us. And if a man beats his male or female servant with a rod so that he dies under his hand, he shall surely be punished. Notwithstand, if he remains alive a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his property. So you, David, would believe that God, Jesus, allowed that if a person beats their slave, and as long as he, his, his beating is severe enough that he dies a day later, you cannot punish the man because a human being is another human's property that he can kill, just letting him live a day. Uh, a couple issues. A couple issues. One, the position of Christians, according to the New Testament, is that God is that God did allow things in the past that He didn't approve of. They didn't think are good, but because of the hardness of our hearts, He allowed us to do them. Right? Wow, this is amazing. Can you? It's not. It's it's basic Christianity. When Jesus when Jesus is asked about divorce, can you divorce your wife or any? Brother, do you want to say something before? Yeah, I yeah. Thank We're going to do a thorough exegesis of Exodus 21. We're going to bury his prophet. And I mean, how much more can we bury Muhammad? He's already in hell, right? Amen. Do me a favor, brother. Go to Exodus 21. Open up the entire chapter because right. I'm going to show you what he did not quote. Anyone who beats their male or female slave with a rod must be punished if the slave dies as a direct result. So if you kill him, notice the slave's life is equal to his master's life. Number one, pay attention. Just because he's a slave or she's a slave and just because she's a woman doesn't mean that the master gets away scot-free if the slave dies. If the slave dies, the master must be killed because their life is equal. Wow, their nice. life is equal, right? Mm -hmm. He stopped at 21, but he didn't read the rest of it. But they are not to be punished if the slave recovers after a day or two since the slave is their property. Now, what it means punished, meaning that you don't kill the owner. But does that mean the owner does not get punished if the slave survives? No. Now go to 26, but he did not read. An owner who hits a male or female slave in the eye and destroys it must let the slave go free to compensate for the eye. And an owner who knocks out the tooth of a male or a female slave must let the slave go free to compensate for the tooth. So notice, if he's injured the slave, the slave is free. But that doesn't mean now, if he injured the slave, he frees the slave, he can no longer own him, even though he purchased him. That doesn't mean he doesn't get punished. Because now, now read again, let, let me read 26, 27 to show you that if an injury is inflicted on a slave, he's automatically free. She's automatically free. An owner who hits a male or female slave in the eye and destroys it must let, let the slave go free to compensate for the eye. An owner who knocks out the tooth of a male or female slave must let the slave go free to compensate for the tooth. But now here's what's interesting. These two verses follow up verses 22 to 25. Now read 22 to 25. If people are fighting and hit a pregnant woman and she gives birth prematurely, but there is no serious injury, the offender must be fi fined whatever the woman's husband demands and the court allows. But if there is serious injury, you are to take life for life. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, bruises for bruises. Now 26 and 27. An owner who hits a male or female slave in the eye and destroys it must let the slave go free to compensate for the eye. And an owner who knocks out the tooth of the male or female slave must let the slave go free to compensate for the tooth. Did you see? It's not a coincidence that God inspired Moses to sandwich what happens to the owner when he punishes a slave with the, what's called the lax talionis, eye for an eye, tooth for a meaning that the punishment, eye for an eye, is applicable to the owner, not only letting him go free, but also suffering due injury. Now, why didn't he read the rest of it? Learn to read the verses before and after. So if you read from 20 to 26, you see that this is thoroughly just because you see the slave is not inferior to the owner. In fact, these laws presuppose that the slave has equal value to the owner, which is why if the slave dies, the owner must be killed. And if the slave is injured, you inflict similar injury to the owner, as well as let the slave go free how in the world are these laws inhumane can you explain that to me uh, because Ibn Fuban did not see the rest of it. He was saying, so you will put the slave in ICU, urgent care, and you will still not be punished. But he didn't read the rest. That's the thing. You won't be punished, huh? Is that what it said? Not at all. The, this is very clear. Eye this for is an eye, tooth for tooth, right? Exactly. And by the way, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth does not just apply for if a woman is caused to deliver prematurely and the baby dies. This command is found throughout the Pentateuch in different contexts. For example, can you do me a favor? Yes, brother, please. 
Go to Leviticus 24 and read from verse 19. Anyone who injures their neighbors is to be injured in the same manner. So wait, is the slave a neighbor? Uh, yes, apparently, yes. Neighbor means someone who's a sojourner who lives with you in your midst. Yes, okay, according to the biblical terminology, yes. And so what did Leviticus 24, 19 say? You do, if you injure your neighbor, what happens to you? Is to be injured in the same manner. Now read 20. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. The one who has inflicted the injury must suffer in the same injury. Now when we read in context, anything wrong with this command? Not at all. In fact, doesn't it show that God loves and honors the life of slaves and holds their lives as equal to the owners? So that if an owner kills a slave, the owner is dead. And if the owner injures the slave, similar injury will be inflicted on him. Absolutely, according to the biblical teaching. Even so Exodus 21 like you was... Let him go, you free him? Yes, sir. She free her, which he said yes. no, right? The lying son of the devil said no, right? Exactly. And yet we just read the context saying... You let him go. You let her go. Yes, you just finished Ibn Fuban in less than five minutes. Mm -hmm. By the way, brother, this is why he fears me and he's slandering me saying, I called the FBI after him or I wrote a threatening letter. You know why, right? Because he knows I'm his nightmare because I'm his God's nightmare by the power of Jesus Christ. He knows what I'm going to do to him and he's afraid. But now, brother, let's turn the tables against him. Guys, you want to see how filthy the Quran is? Go to chapter 2, verse 178. Or oh, you who believed... Prescribed for you is legal retribution for those murders, uh, murdered, the free for the free, the slave for the slave, and the female for the female. Yes. The Quran says you can't kill a free man if he's killed a slave or a woman. Exactly. The only way a free man can be killed is if he killed a free man. Only way a slave will be killed if he killed a slave. Only way a female will be killed if she killed a female. But if a slave kills a female, you can't kill the slave. If a female kills a slave, you can't kill the female. If a female kills the male, you can't kill the female. If a male kills a slave, you can't kill the male. If the male kills a female, you can't kill the female. But whosoever overlooks from his brother, i.e. the killer, anything, then there should be a suitable follow-up and a payment to him with good conduct. This is an elevation from your Lord and a mercy. But whosoever transgresses after that will have a painful punishment. You got it right there. Now, here's what it even gets worse. Some have tried to use 545 to say that 178 was abrogated. Now, I'm going to show you why that's embarrassing. But before we, we continue, did you know that in Islamic law, a Muslim cannot be put to death if he kills a kafir, unbeliever? So if a Muslim kills a Christian living under Islamic rule, you cannot kill the Muslim. He only has to pay, pay blood money. I'm a Christian living under Islamic rule and I pay jizya. So I have a right to exist. The Muslim kills me. All he does is pay blood money and the, my family has to accept it, whether they like it or not. Yes, Pedro just said something interesting. So if a free man kills a slave, then you have to kill his slave. Exactly, Pedro. But now, notice, according to some commentators, 2178 was abrogated. Oh, you who believe retaliation is prescribed for you in the ma matter of the murders once. The free man for free man. A free man who premeditatedly kills another free man. A slave who premeditatedly kills another, and the female for the female. A female who premeditatedly kills another. The verse was revealed regarding two Arab clans, but is abrogated by the verse 545. We're going to come back to that in a minute. That means for a period of time, Allah and his messenger allowed the most unjust punishment to be inflicted up until this passage was inflict, uh, uh, abrogated. For example, up until this passage was supposedly abrogated, that means a free man who killed a slave or a female could not be put to death. Why didn't he give the better verse that's more just from the get-go, from the start? Why didn't he give lax talionis, eye for an eye, from the beginning? Why reveal a verse where a free man, if he kills a slave, gets away scot-free because you can't put him to death? Or if a free man kills a female... He gets away scot-free because he can't put him to death. Why not give 545, which supposedly abrogated this verse from the beginning? But now it gets worse because you know what verse abrogates it? Go to chapter 5, verse 45 to see. And we ordained for them therein a life for a life, an eye for an eye, a nose for a nose, an ear for an ear, a tooth for a tooth, and for wounds is legal retribution. Here, the Quran is quoting the lax talionis of the Torah. It's saying, we are ordained in the Torah given to the Jews, eye for an eye, life for a life, eye for an eye, nose for a nose, tooth for a tooth. In other words, the Quran takes the command given in Exodus and Leviticus and Deuteronomy 
and enjoins Muslims to follow it, which means that even Muhammad saw this law is superior to Allah's command in 2178 and shows that Muhammad understood that this law applies even in the case of a man killing a slave. Oh, not the law you gave in 2178. No, 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 no. We're going to correct my God because we're going to quote the Torah, which is better than the command of my God. Hallelujah. So that means even Muhammad understood how just and fair this law is. And it's applicable even to the master and the free man just as much as a slave. And he used that law to abrogate the law given to him by his God. Amen. I mean, it's over, brother. It's over. It but, was uh, over like 10 minutes ago, man. Now you are crushing Islam. Thoroughly refuted, destroyed, smashed. I think we did a thorough job with Exodus 21.